God doesn't want us to work. He wants us to play. He wants us to play with him. He is a fun, fun God and a fun father. Oh my gosh, and a fun friend. You know, I think we're so concerned about God being king and father and God. We don't think of him as a friend, someone who understands us and loves us and just cherishes us for who we are, his children. And a good parent always loves to play with his children. And he will drop everything to play a game with you because he loves you that much. One of those verses in the Bible that really just, just, just anchors me is that you, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven until you adopt the faith of a child. You know, and that, that to me is such a strong, profound foundation of how God sees us. He sees us as children. As his children. And he loves us as much. As such. And just, just has those experiences with us every single time we commune with him. It never, never ends how much love he wants to outpour into our lives. We come to him with an adult mindset. We come to him with adult requests. We come to him with adult problems. We come to him with adult situations where we want him to help supplicate us in this physical life and just to elevate us just above the surface level here. But that's not what he, he, oh my gosh. He gives us so much more. He gives us just a life beyond, a life of peace and joy and games and fun. I can tell you, every time I have opened up my heart to him and we've just communed in the spirit, it has been nothing but just a joy and a love and so much fun. It's been so innocent, free of questions, free of tests, free of work free of everything that you have to do it's now become something that has become a desire for you to want to do because it's just that it's just that wondrous that joyous i'm a we can we call ourselves you know children of god but we don't see ourselves as children we see ourselves as adults coming to god we, we really do and i think as opposed to us adopting a mindset what I always tell people to do is what frustrates pastors and atheists alike. <laughs> Go directly to the Holy Spirit. Just experience life in Him. Let Him change your heart. Just see how wonderful He is. And then you will just adopt things that you never even thought were possible before. See, that frustrates the mind of a legalist. Because they just want to just fire verses at you left and right and tell you what you need to do, what you've got to do. Atheists always tell you, like, God is ridiculous. There's no such thing. Da, 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 da. You know, so they come at you from the other perspective. But in the middle, in the eye of that storm, is that peace of knowing a person. Not a book. Not a verse. Not a... A physical mindset or just conditioning yourself to believe something it's knowing something is true that's a foundation that he gave us to to walk in he walked he told us to walk in the truth and when you walk in the truth you walk in the facts or you walk into some things that you know not for things that you believe belief is important it's as a spark it gets you ignited it gets your imagination fired up but it's your knowledge in him which causes you to grow, which builds you, helps, helps you to grow in him. And that's where it all is. And it all starts by going directly to him, to the Holy Spirit, to our Father, to our best friend. I've had people tell me, Scott, you can't be an effective dad and be a friend at the same time. Maybe on this earth, you could be correct. In the spirit with God, you can be the best, he can be the best friend you can ever have and be your dad at the same time. And he can do it perfectly, 100% all the way. 
Maybe that's just simply a spiritual experience that helps you walk in the truth for who you really are. But man, it's changed me. And it, it just... <laughs> I just look at everything with a complete perspective, a different perspective now. There's just, the world is something different from the way that I saw it before. I say things that people can see are main, it's just humongous problems are now become trivial. Because they don't know the spirit, they don't know him. They don't know where, where you can meet him. And when you know him, when you come to know him as a real person, my gosh, life just, just changes. It just, it makes you look at everything new. He makes everything new. Man, he is something else. Ain't no other God like him. Ain't no other dad like him. Ain't no other friend like him. He is the best you're going to get. And when you see him, you'll see that's not just enough. It's more than enough. And it's awesome. I hope you get it tonight. It's always there. The invitation is always there. When you walk in that, not just walk in a revelation, live in it. Let that become a door that you walk through and into and experience his love experience him experience what he has what he is who he is everything <laughs> he's your dad and we as dads on this physical earth we try to all we can do is give the best of ourselves and pass it down to our children god gives all of himself to us because the best of god is all of god Ain't no other person can say something like that. And when you experience them, oh my gosh. I've tried to explain this to so many people, and it's just gone in one ear out the other. Because they let religion just cloud their minds. It's all about it's all about the verse. It's all about what the pastor says. It's all about what life dictates. It's not about our father. It's not about our life with him. It's all about physical circumstances. Oh, you know, I'm giving this video right now. I'm walking my dog. I'm getting some fresh air and some exercise, and it's just so nice being out here. You know, it's been raining, but you know what? The sun still shines above all these things. Now you can look at it and say, hey, it's a cloudy day out there. It's dreary. But I see there's still a sun shining above all this. You know, I'm still, I still have light even through this. Despite what's coming down my way, I'm still getting light shining on me now. <laughs> right now, I'm getting light from the street lamp, but light from the natural light. There we go. Now we're back to the normal, <laughs> the normal setting. Now you're sitting, dang, Scott, that's some, some great special effects you got going on there. But no, all joking aside, we have the best friend, the best father, the best... God, the best, you name the best, everything, he is the best for us. And he is with us always. I experience him all the time in various degrees. There's no set pattern. There's no set tradition. There's no set strategy that I go by. You know, people tell you what you should do. God never tells me other than he gave me one command just to stay by him. And that was the only thing that I needed to do. Is everything came from his presence. I never had to ask him for anything. I never had to ask him to do anything. I never asked him to come, to be, to, to do this, that, and the other thing. No, he, everything was, came directly from him. And he was always there. And he always will be. He never leaves me. I don't have to have the Bible tell me that. Because I experienced it in him. The Bible reaffirmed it. That is, that is exactly the point of what the scriptures are supposed to be for. To affirm. Sometimes we let some, some things slip past our minds. You know, we may be kind of 
taking our minds off of him and focusing on things of this world because there are problems out there. We need to focus to help people. And sometimes if we are on those problems too much, we kind of lose our spiritual perspective and we just kind of anchor ourselves more on the spiritual perspective, on, on the physical perspective. And then we start falling into depressions. We start realize, thinking maybe there's no hope and thinking about, you know, there's, there's no cause to be joyous for. But after you've been with him and experienced him, to let him shower, shower his love onto you in prayer, you have a total clarity of mind. So you have to keep renewing your mind. And you know that is true. There's where the Bible is an affirmation. <laughs> the constant renewal of your mind. There it is. You read it. But you knew it to be true based on your experiences with him. So there is the joyous love that I have. When I see people who are just walking in such depression, they are walking in fear of loss. But when you have the knowledge of yourself in him, when you have been with him, experience love and life with him in him you know you can't lose it you know you can't lose it religion will tell you that will make you arrogant that mentality the spirit will give you peace in that and the peace is your ministry okay I may have to call this miss mission to an end here because my dog is now going to the bathroom, so I have to <laughs> take care of him. But I hope this blesses you tonight. This blessed me saying it. I'm sure it will bless from many people hearing it tonight. I really do. From the bottom of my heart. So bless your heart. Thank you so much. Gizmo, you got anything okay? You good? That's my puppy. I walk with him twice a day. He gives me my walk in the morning and at night. A little, 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 little shit thing. You want to say hey to everybody? Say hey. He goes like, I can't speak. I'm a dog. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a great night. And I'll talk to y'all later. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.